Hey guys, Dennis back with another new video. So uh, we got all these DIY videos out and whatnot. So um, we recently ran into an issue where our coffee pot stopped working. So we have this Cuisinart coffee pot. Um, fill it with water, you know, your, your typical routine for making a pot of coffee. And it just sits there. Um, this one actually had an error code of ERH. I did some Googling, I could not find what it meant. So um, let's dive into this a little bit deeper. All right, so to take the coffee pot apart, basically you wanna drain any water that's still remaining in it. Take your carafe out, um, anything that's gonna fall out. Um, I also wanna give you the model number on this. I, it is in the description of the video, but it is a CBC 7200 PC. I'm pretty sure we bought this at Costco um, and they probably sell it at other places, but um, I had already taken this apart uh, prior to starting the video. So there's four screws just like this. You don't have to pull any of the rubber feet off or anything. Um, I don't think there was any rubber feet on here initially, but um, basically Phillips screwdriver, all four corners here. Definitely make sure it's unplugged so you don't electrocute yourself, right? And um, when you un first initially flip this over, you're gonna, you're gonna have your power cord. It's gonna be routed in this little strain relief piece here. So you just gotta kinda pop it out of there. This is where the water from the reservoir right um comes through the little filter in here this particular coffee pot does have a filter so it's filtered through this is your heater element right here so this heats the water and then this is where the water goes up to the strainer basket where your coffee filter is and it percolates that water on top of um, your coffee grinds to make your coffee right so there is a circuit board in here there's a little ribbon cable here this is what powers the display and all of the buttons up top um, there is this, these two skinny white wires here. These actually go to another connector that you can pop out. Um, I initially smelled like a, almost like a telltale electrical burning kind of smell, um, typically when circuit boards fail. I looked at the circuit board, I didn't see any issues with it. Um, the relay still does click on and off when I, when I hit the brew button. Um, all of the functions on the display work, so uh, I'm leading to believe that there's no issue with this. Right, um, I believe this is the temperature sensor for for the heating element here. So what you wanna look for is right here. Now I, I already disassembled the fuses off of here, but this is my heating element, right? Now if you have a multimeter, like one of these here, what you wanna do, um, it, I mean it doesn't even have to be digital, it could be an analog one, you wanna put it on resistance or ohms, right? And we wanna measure the resistance of our heating element. And that's gonna tell me if the element is good or not. And if you see, I have 14 ohms. All right, we can do a little math. I'll actually show it in a video here. Um, we can do a little math and figure out um, the current that this particular um, heating element will draw at 120 volts and 14 ohms. And I believe it comes out to eight amps and some change, like 8.7 I think it was. And if you use your power formula um, and look at the power rating on here, 1,025 watts, if I do those calculations, um, it comes out to 14 ohms. So I know that heater element is within spec um, for 1,025 watts at 120 volts. So I know my heater element is good. And then what you'll see inside of here, and it was connected, like this right here this is a thermal fuse and it's really hard to make out um, the lettering on it these are the replacements here but it is a uh, it's 250 volt rated right it's it's rated over what you're gonna put into it right 120 volts from your um, household receptacle but it's rated for 240 degrees Celsius now these fuses either fail on too much current going through them. This particular one's rated for 10 amps, right? If we know that our heater element is only gonna draw 8.7, then you know if it ever shorts or anything, that will definitely blow this fuse. But having this thermal fuse in the vicinity of this hot plate here, if this hot plate gets too hot um, and the controls of the uh, coffee pot don't shut the hot plate down, then inside of here, this the fuse element in here um, I'm not quite sure how they work physically, but um, I, I assume it melts or whatnot, and this fuse will fail. And you can check this fuse the same way with your multimeter on ohms, right? 
you don't want to touch both ends on here because you're going to be reading the resistance of your body, as you can see here. But you know, a good a good few is it should be shorted, right? It should be the same as as holding both of your leads together. And what I'm reading here is basically the resistance of these uh, meter leads on here. So if I just hold my hand on one side and then I press this to the other side, you'll notice, hey, I have no continuity. That thermal fuse is bad. Well, there's actually two of them in here. One for the hot, one for the neutral. So there's two of them in here. I checked both of them before I cut them out. And let's put this back here. I have no resistance there either. So what I did, instead of buying a $70 coffee pot, is I bought these fuses from Amazon. I'll drop a link down in the description to these. There was like, I think it was like eight bucks with tax and uh, you know free shipping. Um, took a couple days to come in. And it comes with a bunch of them. Now, when you go to replace these in here, um, very, very important, right? You don't want to solder these back in, all right? That's kind of your first inkling is to, oh, I'll just solder these in here. It'll make a nice little quick connection, right? Solder will melt from the heat inside of here. And this thing will probably, you know, come undone, touch something in here, short out, pop a circuit breaker or damage the coffee pot even more. So um, the way they had these mounted in here before is one side of this was like spot welded to the heater element. And then you can see they have like a, uh, either a brass or a copper or whatever here, um, kind of crimp on connector that was connected to the wire. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip back both of these wires and I'm gonna use a, like a butt splice. Okay, and um, we should be good now. I'm gonna bend this element lead up just a little bit. We don't want it to touch the hot plate and we don't want it to touch this uh, this clamp on the water hose here. So I'm gonna bend them both up and away from each other. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy. They're extremely tight um, using these little butt splices. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our mounting screws back in here. All right guys, moment of truth. We're all back together. Um, I do have water in the craft right now. I'm just gonna turn it on. You can hear, you can hear that relay click. So we're gonna give it a minute. I'm gonna check, see if the hot plate is getting warm. If it is, then we'll dump some water in and we'll make sure that it brews once more. All right, so let's pull this out. Let's put it to the side. I can already feel heat coming off of here, so. Um, I'm going to say that's fixed. Let's pour some water in here. Oh, look at that already. That's a good sign. All right, guys. So we're going to call that fixed. It's brewing. It's happy. It's hot. There's no leaks. And we saved about 70 bucks on a new coffee pot. So uh, I'll be sure to drop a link in the description for the thermal fuses. I got them on Amazon. Um, you can get them from an electronic parts supplier. Um, once again, I definitely don't recommend doing this unless you're pretty familiar with doing electrical electronics work. Um, you know, you don't, you don't wanna one, shock yourself, or two, cause a fire. Uh, I'm pretty confident that this is safe. And uh, we have a working coffee pot again. Thanks for watching guys. Um, if this video was useful or helped you out, make sure to hit a like, hit that subscribe button. I got a ton of stuff always coming out. 
Um, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.